Welcome to the SM5 Advanced Briefing. This video is for players who are relatively new to SM5 and want to take their gameplay to the next level. When you're playing SM5 on a more competitive level, you can expect things to get pretty serious pretty quickly. It's the difference between playing quick play versus competitive in an online game such as Overwatch or League of Legends. You will be expected to perform a function, and failure to do so will screw over your team. Now don't get me wrong, competitive SM5 is way more fun and rewarding than casual play. It does require a lot of training and practice though. Today I'm going to try to get you going in the right direction. The rules. In normal laser tag games, there are some vague rules that don't really apply here such as no running. You can scrap what you know, because SM5 is played with a more specific set of rules and referees to enforce them. I've placed a link to the SM5 rules in the description. I will also link you to a briefing video that includes a detailed overview of the rules at the end of it. For right now, there are two rules which you will encounter the most. First, whenever you fire, you have to show two targets to the player you are tagging. One is always your phaser, the other is usually a shoulder. The reason we do this is to prevent players from abusing IR sensors which aren't always perfect. In Space Marines 5, we prefer to win with skill and positioning rather than the ability to whip your phaser around a wall. The biggest example is when you fire around a corner. You can't just stick your phaser around. You have to bring another target into your opponent's line of sight at the same time. Our best players have developed techniques to do this very quickly, and asking an experienced player for coaching is a really effective way to learn how to get around this rule. The other main rule is no following, but it gets more specific than that. You cannot follow a deactivated player for more than 10 feet. You can follow an active player as much as you want, but when a player is down and they move, they create a trail. If you follow a deactivated player along their trail for 10 feet or more and aim your phaser at them before they come up, it is a penalty. Some side notes, you can legally take an alternate route to keep up with the player. Another note is trails dissipate when the player reactivates. If they're active, you can go at them. I find it safest to wait two seconds after they activate before reinitiating to avoid a penalty though. I have had mixed responses to waiting two seconds versus the moment they come up. Following a player along their trail for 9 feet is completely illegal. If a referee sees you break a rule, they will deactivate you for 6 seconds and you will be deducted 1000 points. If you want to contest a penalty, you can do so after games. How to win. In Space Marines, there are two primary goals that the whole team is trying to accomplish. The actual way to win is to outscore the enemy team. If your team score is higher than the enemy's, you win, period. This is a very vague goal, however, so many focus on killing the medic. Killing the medic means the enemy team can no longer gain back lives. When the medic dies, it's only so long before the other teammates will start dying off too, and you can collect a nice fat 10,000 elimination bonus. You also tend to score more points when the enemy team is panicking and trying to defend their medic from dying out. Simple logic. The basic strategy. It is never good to try complicated strategies before you nail down the basics. Trust me. Start with the basics. I'm going to lay out the universal SM5 strategy which teams all around the world consistently implement. This strategy assumes you are playing with the standard team of six, one of every role and two scouts. The medic hides in a safe spot where they can resupply their team. They do not pop out or try to fight. The medic hides because they cannot gain lives back. It's imperative that they keep themselves out of danger or their team will lose. The ammo stays with the medic always and resupplies their team. They act as a last line of defense for the medic, and they stay with the medic so they can give doubles to their team. The heavy defends the ammo and the medic. They play defensive and try to keep their resupplies alive. The heavy plays defensive, not just because they're effective for stopping commanders, but also because they constantly need resupplies. The scouts play offensively and try to attack the enemy medic. The scouts play offensive because they get resupplied very quickly and can stay out for longer periods of time. The commander plays offensively and attacks the enemy medic. When they get enough points for a nuke, they use it pretty quickly. The commander plays offensive because it generally gets them more points for nukes, and they are effective for killing resupplies. Maintaining your lives and shots. In most every game type, you have unlimited lives and shots, but in SM5, you can run out of both. Pretty easily. This is what makes SM5 so intense. You have to manage these factors very carefully by staying resupplied and also staying out on the field fighting. Here are two mistakes new players make. One, they are constantly running low or critical, which means less than 10 lives or shots. Often these players run out of shots and are useless targets, or get killed out of the game early from a nuke drop that they aren't expecting. Sometimes you might feel like you need to keep fighting or your team will lose, but I promise you it's better to just give the enemy a little leeway if it means you aren't playing on critical. A good help with this is to get 2-5 to five resupplies whenever you come back. This minimizes the time spent out of position while keeping you full and healthy, so you're not always running back and forth between the field and your resupplies. 2. The other mistake is they are constantly getting resupplies. 
I've had players of 20 plus lives and 50 plus shots asking for resupplies at the same time as a player running on critical, and this is a really good way to lose the game. When more than one person is back in and resupplied, that is risky. You need to be rotating and keeping people out on the field or the enemy will take control of the game. If two other teammates are back getting resupplied, just leave and come back later. In general, the heavy takes priority, then the commander, and then scouts need to just take one and leave if the others are trying to get resupplied. Downtimes and resets. Pay attention, this is very important. When you are deactivated, your pack will shut off for exactly 8 seconds. For the first 4 seconds, you cannot be tagged or deactivated by any means except a nuke. We're gonna call this safe time. For the second 4 seconds, which we will call danger time, you can be reset. Resetting means you can tag a player during their danger time if you hit a different target as your most recent tag. I'll try to elaborate with an example. If green 1 tags red 1, then he can reset red 1 by tagging red 2, green 2, or the base over here. As long as you tag something else, you can reset a target in their danger time. There is no limit to the number of times you can reset a target. Green 1 could tag red 1, then red 2, then red 1, then red 2, then red 3, then red 1, then red 2, then red 3. You can reset players even if you weren't the one to tag them down in the first place. If you see a player deactivated, just running away, you probably can reset them. A huge mistake that new players make is staying near their teammates. It is actually way more beneficial to spread out and be in different spots. If your heavy is down and their tagger tags you, now your heavy is going to get reset for another 6 seconds. You are costing your team uptime. Do not be a walking reset target. Communicate! Commander down! Both three shots down! One and Luke! Two and Zach! Y'all coming in, get ready! One! Eric! Right here, right here! Shoot! Right Can we get a three shot? Someone's going to fun bar! Right upstairs! Where's that red star? One in, one in, one in! Woo! Yo, okay. Communicate. This skill cannot be learned early enough. Competitive Space Marines is actually a really loud game. You need to yell as much information to your team as possible. I can't give enough examples of why this is important. One example is, if the Heavy is looking one direction, and the Commander is on top of you, instead of silently running away, just scream, COMMANDER ON ME! If you don't, the Commander will tag your Heavy in the back. Here's a list of good information to call out. Where enemy players are located. What position enemy players are. How many lives or shots an enemy team has. How you are doing on resupplies. Good players also ask their teammates for help. Great players listen and answer the call. Here are a few examples. Ask for a reset when you have tagged down a player and they do not move. Ask for a nuke when you hear an enemy has 3 lives or less. Ask for assistance when you are running low on shots or lives. The class basics. If you are new, play scout until the game becomes familiar to you. For most players, it is overwhelming at first and they don't understand what other players are doing and why. Play scout until you understand the basic functions of the five roles, then begin trying those other classes and expand your knowledge. I've brought some tournament experienced experts to help explain the basics of these classes. Scout is the most diverse class. It is easy to play a basic style such as an attacker or defensive sniper. The mark of a great scout, however, is when they can adapt their style to what their team needs. If the heavy is running low, a scout might step in and hold the line for 20 seconds while the heavy refills. If the commander can't break through the enemy heavy, a scout could flank and provide offensive support. Scouts get resupplied very quickly, therefore a scout should never be competing with a 3 hit, commander or heavy. For resupplies, they are pretty self-reliant and should stay on the field for long periods. The ammo carrier and medic come as a pair. The basics of the resupplies are to let your team defend you and focus on resupplying players who need it. The ammo and medic need to be doubling. When they both shoot at the same target, instead of getting one resupply, the person gets both. This is essential as the quicker a player gets resupplied, the quicker they can leave. The worst thing that can happen is for your entire team to come back needing resupplies at the same time. If you are a medic, stay out of sight. Don't try to go out and fight, as you only have 20 lives and need to conserve them. Even though it may feel like you're doing the least work, being conservative with your lives could lead your team to recover from a crisis. If you are the ammo, think of yourself as the medic's bodyguard. Stay close to your medic and be their eyes and ears. Whenever you have time, be getting lives from your medic, and make sure to alert them if there are enemies nearby, and have an escape plan prepared for them. The Heavy is the most powerful player on your team, and therefore bears a lot of responsibility. The real reason Heavy usually defends the resupplies is because they constantly need to be refilled. Take responsibility for stopping the three hits from attacking your resupplies. If a commander gets in, usually your resupplies lose a bunch of lives, 
get chased out, and have to set up somewhere else. Conserve your shots and control your team's territory. As commander, you need to be on the offensive front lines and keeping pressure on the enemy's resupplies. Go out, score points, get resupplied, rinse, wash, and repeat. The main factor with commanders is their nukes. Nukes are the most powerful instrument for demolishing an enemy team. When you have a nuke, make sure you launch it at a good time as well as a safe time. Some commanders hold their nukes until their team is already dead, and at that point, they're basically worthless. When you launch a nuke, find a hiding spot and make sure nobody sees you there. Getting a nuke cancelled cannot be ideal and often costs teams the game. Starting your journey. If you are just starting your career in Space Marines, I want you to know I have great empathy for you. To become a great Space Marine takes years of work, and you will have to overcome haters, your own ego, and a lot of losses. But the journey is worth it. I want to leave you with some final tips to improve your capabilities. A good way to improve is to referee games and watch members you respect. Watch how they play and observe the choices they make. And if you ask them, most players are willing to offer advice and some will even mentor you. I was a commander main until I watched a player named Why Am I a Sad Brew play Heavy and I was refereeing one of his games. His playstyle inspired me to try Heavy because I liked the way he did it and I became a Heavy main. And by far, the best way to improve is to go to a competitive tournament, especially one at a different arena. At the start, it is incredibly frustrating and you will struggle to adapt. However, every player I know who has gone to an away tournament without exception came back significantly improved with a better understanding of the game. Additional resources! Join the LF Tournament Facebook page and become a part of the community and get signed up for tournaments. Every year there is an Internationals, West Coast Tournament, and East Coast Tournament. And that's just in the US. Finally, get involved with some of the SM5 content slowly gaining ground on the internet. These guys do a weekly podcast. These guys made a briefing video that goes over the rules in depth. If you have a question, leave it below and I will answer it. Thanks for watching and keep your phaser up.